So let me then uh, do some problems to just talk about like sketching in general. In general. So let's sketch uh, this to, uh, for example, like R is equal to four sine uh, three theta. So the idea first, um, what do I would love to use? I would love to use the Cartesian equation in terms of uh, R and theta. Because I know that the standard function in this Cartesian equation, uh, sine function is gonna look something like this. I'm going to indicate that this is my pi and this is my two pi. So if R changes between negative one, uh, let's, let's make it smaller, between negative one and one, then my fi sine function is gonna look something like this. Yeah, so my sine function is gonna look like that uh, way. But here we have sine three theta. So what does it mean? It means like you can take a, observe that when your theta is going to change between zero and two pi over three. So if you, for example, take this value and plug in this value inside three theta, that is going to be equal to two pi. So it means right now you're going to kind of compress your wave into this form. So you're going to take your two pi and you're going to divide your two pi into uh, three equal uh, segments. So they're not equal, let's take this one. So this is going to be two pi over three. And this one is going to be equal to four pi over three. And uh, okay, now the overall look equal. And then what does it mean? It means uh, you're going to put e a science uh, wave in each of that section. So, and how is it going to work? We know how the our sine function looks like. So my sine function is gonna look something like this. You see. So this uh, red graph right now is going to be equal to sine three theta. So I'm going to stop here for a second, just you to ask, uh, ask me if you have any questions. So basically since theta changes between zero and two pi over three, then it means we're going to compress our wave. And to sketch the whole graph, you need to trace your theta between zero and pi. So that's why we're kind of going to trace our sine function three times. Okay. So now there's like no question. So I'm going to move on. So the last factor I'm going to have four. So that means I'm going to take each point and multiply it by four. So I'm going to have uh, this like uh, two, three, four, negative two, negative three, negative four. So let me erase the green graph. So right now this blue graph is going to be just got stretched like this. Sorry, it's not really beautiful, yeah. And we're going to have uh, the final version Cartesian equation of uh, R in terms of theta is going to be this blue graph over here. So after this, we're going to sketch our X and Y uh, Cartesian coordinates. And right now we want to translate this graph uh, to Cartesian coordinates in terms of X and Y. And how we're going to do this, we're going to analyze uh, each of these, uh, like, kind of say, like bumps. So, can anyone tell me if this point is two pi over three, what are the coordinates of this point over here? Pi over three. Yeah, uh, because it's going to be two pi divided by two, so it's going to be two pi over six, which is equal to pi over three. So you can see that the first bump is going to happen within zero and sixty degrees. So, in other words, you can take our Cartesian coordinates. And then we're going to divide it into how, like 60 degrees uh, into like segments that look like this. Okay, so this angle theta is equal to pi over six and this theta is equal to uh, two pi over, sorry, pi over three and this equal to two pi over three. Okay, so when my uh, angle, if I'm gonna start at point, let's, I don't know what color to use, let's use orange color. 
If I'm going to start at this point, theta is equal to zero, I'm going to get point zero. And you can see when I'm going to move this point from zero to in the middle of pi over three, which is like, uh, so let's see, uh, it's pi over three. Yeah, so if I'm going to move back and forth from zero to pi over three, then what is going to happen uh, I'm going to reach at point pi over six, uh, the maximum, which is going to be equal to four. This, this point is pi over six. And then come back to zero. So that's why if I'm think of, I'm going to divide this um, pi over three angle again, like by uh, two, then I'm going to have this look over here, where like this radius is equal to four. Okay, so uh, let's call it one. Does anyone have any questions about this? Uh, can you say in the poll that uh, yes, like if you understand most of it, uh, how I got the result at the bench? Okay, Aaron got it, yeah. And so the trick is right now you can see that the next I need to move on to the second branch over here is, is going to be with negative value. So instead of sketching the uh, loop over there, I'm going to sketch loop over here. So it's going to be my second loop. And then finally, when I'm going to move to uh, our like last segment between uh, uh, this like before like pi, I'm going to sketch loop over here. So it's going to be the third loop. And you can see that if you're going to trace three other loops, we're going to just trace this graph one more time. And that is like the idea that if we have sine uh, of three of negative theta, that is going to be equal to negative sine three theta. So this minus, minus sine over here takes in, in account and since we have three in front of our angle, we're going to have how many loops? We're going to have three loops. So if I'm going to have five there, then I'm going to have uh, five loops and so on. Uh, even if you don't know this rule, you always can figure out what is the graph of your parametric equation just using this procedure over here. So my goal was like, just try to do step-by-step, step, don't rush because it's better like to do just one problem uh, and to show like every step than just do more of them. But then I'm going to just jump over solutions. So uh, do you guys have any other requests for doing problems from section 10.3? Because for the same approach you can use to find uh, 6F, basically the same idea. So for 3C, what do we need to do? We need to, so we have 10.3.3C. So we have R is equal to cosecant theta. Uh, and we know that cosecant theta is equal to one over sine theta. So right now we have the equation R is equal to one over sine theta. And we want to express this equation in terms of uh, in X and Y. But we know the, um, the formula is that X is equal to R cosine theta and y is equal to r sine theta. And you can see if you're going to take this equation and multiply both sides by sine theta, you're going to obtain r sine theta is equal to one. But from this equation, we can replace left-hand side with y, so I'm going to have y is equal to one. So in other words, the Cartesian graph of this equation is going to be when y is constant, so that is going to be a line. 10.7, uh, I would say I'm going to do, so 10.37a. So the idea is the following. We have the Cartesian graph in terms of R, in terms of theta and R. So it's R and theta actually. And what do you want to do? We want to sketch this uh, graph in Cartesian coordinates X and Y. 
and we have that our graph is look uh, like a straight line that goes uh, through some theta. So L. Uh, let's just choose theta to be equal to pi over four. And then I know that if I'm going to want to jump from one graph to another one, I need to use the formula x is equal to r cosine theta and y is equal to r sine theta. But when theta is equal to pi over four, I'm going to just get x is equal to square root of two over two r and y is equal to square root of two over two r. But this is a parametric equation in terms of r. So if I want to sketch this graph, I need to eliminate the parameter. I'm going to obtain y is equal to x. And y is equal to x is going to be this line. And you can see that makes sense because if you want to set at this point, you're going to have a constant angle and the thing is going to change, your radius is going to change. So this line is going to be, is going to have a fixed angle pi over four and you're going to just trace that line, uh, the point on that line back and forth. 